based on which book and page was this again? It's the Spilljammer book that I sent you guys. But if you guys remember last week we picked up we stopped at port and you guys were picking up a job and going from there. Um, if you want Yonavin, you can continue from there and we'll basically you guys are getting a understand better understanding from Gary on the finer points of ship to ship combat in the Phlogiston. And so based, wild space. Based on how the captain uses his spell slots to evoke ship modes, um, affects whether attack rolls from the ship have advantage or disadvantage. Or, or, uh, so if he puts it into normal operational mode, everything's normal. That's a DC 10 roll. If he does it in an offensive manner, all attack rolls from the ship have advantage until the start of the ship's next turn. Puts it in defensive manner, all attacks made against the ship have disadvantage. For full offense, all attacks on the ship are made as if the targets had vulnerability to all damage. Wow. And all attack rolls made against the ship until the start of the next ship's turn are made with advantage. So it gives us advantage and they're vulnerable, but it also gives them advantage against us. Ouch. But we're not vulnerable, so it's a net gain. Yes. Uh, full defense is the the opposite. All attacks rolls made against the ship are made if the targets had full had resistance to all damage, and all attacks from the ship until the next turn are made with disadvantage. Um, so you you have advantage, then you have advantage with uh, vulnerabilities, and you have disadvantage and disadvantage with vulnerabilities. I mean, it's yeah. Um, the ship can also ram as a DC-20 roll, and Oof. the attacking ship deals damage equal to its tonnage multiplied by the ship's current speed. The attacking ship takes damage equal to the tonnage of the ship it ram. Ouch. Yeah. So it rams not... a bigger ship, we're screwed. Pretty much. In the case... <laughs> right. In the case of creatures, this damage equals 3d10 plus the additional... 1d10 for each size category above medium. So if we're going to ram that creature in space, you know, creatures within 15 feet to the point of impact must make a dex save, DC 20, or take 4d6 bludgeoning damage and be knocked prone. Uh, you can knock it out. Or... Um, as normal, save, successful save, half the damage, and not knock prone. All right, um... failing a maneuver roll puts the ship in a vulnerable position. Attack rolls from the ship have disadvantage, and attack rolls against it have advantage until the next turn. Mm -hmm. So if you miss that DC 20 or 25, you're not doing well. Yeah. <laughs> but normal operation is just the DC 10, and it's made like a spell slot with the, uh, the spell modifier. So I think our captain's pretty good at those. Thank you, Alex. Uh, link, John. Sure. Well, here's the thing: is that the captain isn't actually the one that's helming the ship. True, you're right. There's a helmsman. That and we haven't actually met yet. And it's based on their uh, if they're proficient with the ship, too. Correct. That matters. Cool, we have combat rules for the ship's weapons that I didn't go over. But we need to find out from Gari what the ship's weapons actually are. Uh, currently we have a few ballista. I believe they're light ballista. So a light ballista is a medium-sized weapon with 15 AC, hit points 30, attack modifier plus 6, 3,000 range, it does 1d10 piercing, and it takes 2 to crew it.
Hmm. We might want to upgrade before we head out against this thing. Or we choose not to take it. Because it's easy. Yes. I mean, it might be crazy to attempt it, but wouldn't it be fun? <laughs> yes, it would. I actually don't know, because there may be prime role-playing opportunities, but um, I'm not sure how much we would actually participate. Ship for ship, sure. Ship versus creature? Eh? Depends on the type of creature it is. What happens if we get stranded because we took too much damage? If a ship we, is reduced to zero HP, its internal structure is destroyed and we can fall apart. <laughs> it means that we die and we will we roll characters or new campaign or something. It is, <laughs> it is possible for survivors to lash up some of the vessel to save themselves with a temporary home and air pocket. Dang. But if How we're temporary? Deep, but we're out in deep space. <laughs> you relied on rescue. That isn't coming. Alright, so I, what I was thinking is correct. There are four weapon and two large weapons on your current <clears throat> ship. Okay. It is a galleon, is its classification size. So if you have the Spelljammer PDF there, you're able to look at that and you'll be able to see what that all entails. <clears throat> Into the ship's category, you'll see there is a galleon. Yep, yep, three large, uh, one medium and two large, cool. Yep. It's uh, very maneuverable, though, and that's cool. Yep. So, silly question. Are these rules that we're seeing made for <laughs> Pathfinder, or were they made for 5e? Uh, this PDF is built, it's a, technically a homebrew 5e. for 5e. Yep, and the one I linked is also a combat primer for 5e. Yep. Um, so, do we just have one media, one light ballista? Or... Currently, you had three light ballistas, but they can all be changed out. Okay. Yeah, uh, we would probably want to do at least medium ballistas, if not heavy into mediums or something. Uh, it requires higher and higher ideal crews for them. Um, they don't cost that. I mean, they cost a lot, but they're not they're not like a cannon cost. Um, but a light ballista, <laughs> a light ballist is one d10 of damage. A medium is three d10. A heavy is five d10. Hey guys, let's light it up with a Greek fire projector. Yeah. If it's in what? the done, that's gonna but be that's, a lovely. But that's idea. just five d10, man. Yeah, until it blows up in our face. Right. <laughs> I mean, that costs ten thousand, and a heavy ballista costs fifteen hundred for the same damage. And it starts fires that may be negative for us. <laughs> Wait, it starts <laughs> fires? However, we would kill it. No, a heavy ballista won't fit on our ship, sir. It will. No, it will not. Why? It's we have huge. room. It's yeah. huge, not large. We have room for two large and one medium? Correct. Can we make room? Oh, we could do a cannon. <laughs> we could do two cannons. Now, oh, we cannot do two cannons because um, I don't have 40,000 gold. To spend <laughs> and we'll probably go and buy his own ship before that happens. Uh, but the damage is cannon. nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. What damage does it do? 8d10 bludgeoning. <laughs> Versus 3d10. <laughs> oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. 
Can I find a busted one to repair? <laughs> oh, no, no, you're right. We could actually equip the heavy ballista. But one, one of them. Yeah. Counts as Which too is... large. Counts as too large. Okay. So does a trebuchet. So does a heavy jetson. But a the, single uh, trebuchet, though. A D10. Can't hit targets within 60 feet. That's a problem. Well, if it grapples, should... it means. Yeah. Good point. If it grapples, just stop up and chop it up. That's the alternative, right? It's just so easy. Yeah. Mm hmm. Have you seen uh, Pirates of the Caribbean? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, just <laughs> chop it up. It's easy. Hey, Jack did pretty well for a while. <laughs> they were doing pretty good against it for a while. I think your opinion of pretty well makes me want to abandon ship. <laughs> <laughs> they were chopping his legs up pretty for a while. So, gentlemen. What is that? Well, how much gold do we have between us, and how much gold can we get from the captain to buy ship weapons? And we need we need to talk to him see if he wants to do this mission, but we'll need better ship armament to do it. Cleok is against taking this mission. Requires upgrading his armament. If we choose to upgrade the ship armament, the Cleoc will not be contributing. That's fair. I mean, we ought to talk to the captain and see what he thinks. Cookie's about out of cash. I just spent, you know, two medium ballista's worth on a pack of armor at port. Which was Poor guy much? that isn't even here today. I know. Was that, Talon? Try, but... So how much did you spend? 2,000. Dang. That's hey, for... I got a full plate of adamantine for that. Damn. Yeah. I wasn't going to go out of that shop without paying for it. <laughs> I got a deal. <laughs> yeah, you did. <clears throat> now, if we just cut a groove in it, we can slide a cannon in there. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, this guy just sees things as beef to an end. He's an event. <laughs> That adamantine would help you make better weapons, huh? I mean, what was my plus one gun made of, uh, DM? I got a special metal from the, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> at the, in the Elven City. Uh, Wasn't it Mithril? Yeah, I think so. You're right. Because those guys... Grew their hair and stuff. Yeah. And I was so sad he was friends with him and I couldn't get one or buy one from him. <laughs> I just like break the game though. <laughs> In this supply of metal. Yeah, there's reasons. Uh, they're so cute and fluffy. Just like I don't think we would have been successful stealing that full, full, full sword. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if it's a, if it was a vorpal sword, but everything that was described about what happened makes me think it was. It's probably a good thing we didn't try. And Nate's standard answer is, it's much worse. Hey, only when it's true. Okay, and what it was, was it? Admit it. <laughs> what was it then? I didn't say it was or wasn't. It's still in our world, we don't need to know. It's a thing of legend that apparently is featured in Baldur's Gate. A slither. Uh, Baldur's ah. Gate 2, at least. I'm not sure if one. I don't think one has it. 
we might encounter it later on, so we shouldn't know what it is. You can't play to uh, and not encounter it. Esther. And I'll leave it at that. How are? Huh? What? Something so. about can't play two. Well. Whatever. Carry so on. we want to talk to the captain. Yes. I believe that was your plan. Was there anything else we wanted to do <clears throat> before? We go, we go over as a, as a group to the captain. Yeah. Welcome, guys. How can I help you? So uh, we found <clears throat> we found this job opportunity that seems a bit different than anything else we've experienced. Interesting. There's um, there's a space monster with a bounty on his head. Those are dangerous. But if you're able to, sometimes they have pretty decent layers. Oh, so the. I think we might be able to find its lair? Sometimes. If you can, they usually wind up being some pretty nice bonus. Hmm. We were a bit worried about uh, actually engaging it in open space. It has a. a legacy of uh, chomping on ships. Well, most monsters like that, you can't exactly encounter them elsewhere because that's where they stay and reside. Hmm. So I guess we were wondering how you felt about taking on a mission like this. Seems to be a higher risk uh, for the ship than normal. You know, we could potentially give it a whirl. We need something to make a little more money. We've been running a little bit... Uh, shy on funds lately that's right higher risk higher reward mm -hmm. gari tells us uh that you've got some light ballistas mounted on the ship but yes three of them maybe mount something heavier i'd love to but i currently don't have a lot of money I might be able to get one Maybe two, if you can get the crew to pitch in. That's part of why we're trying to up our income a little bit. Hmm. Well, so guys, what do you think? I wouldn't be against uh, pitching in for uh, a medium if it came back out of the rewards on the wind side. So, uh, I'll, if you can alone... find its layer, it should. <clears throat> You're saying you'd like the captain to buy the weapon from you after we succeed. Correct. use part of the bounty to pay for it. And it would help ensure that the uh, <laughs> we actually were able to survive to get it. Keep in mind, if he does that sort of a thing, that means he takes a cut on his reward. Yes, but then he ends up with a better ship. A little bit. I'm of the opinion that people are generally more generous when they have money in hand and a successful mission with no damage to their ship or something like that. I think we might have a better bargaining position, Yonovan, after we have earned the captain his share. I mean... Sure, we could just try to sell it back to the market. I'm sure that they'll uh, pay us <laughs> some of what we paid. Right. Well, maybe what that's... Here's the thing. Out of character. 
Well, if he, you know, how much would they pay us like after it's been used? About a tenth of it. Market standard is half everything. Well, we could actually sell it. Like we said, we could sell what we put in for it. You know, at least for that price. Pay for over, you know, a couple we of missions. We have a problem with this plan. Yeah. What's that? Is that I'm not sure if you place a light ballista, medium ballista, what happens to the light? Can we sell it? Well, I don't see why we couldn't sell it for half value, same as everything else. Well, let's put it this way it's not particularly smart to. If we have to get rid of the light ballista to equip the medium ballista, and then we want to try and recoup our cost of the medium ballista, and then have to replace it with the light ballista, that that doesn't make economic. Okay. So yes, I I think once we, once we go this route, I don't think we're going to get the money back out trying to sell it. We may or may not get a bonus from the captain for upgrading it. I think the main bonus from the captain is letting us take this rather dangerous mission. Because he would be responsible for the damage to his ship, which could be considerable. Um, it looks like the best thing we can do to outfit this sucker would be two medium ballistas and a medium catapult. No, we can't do that. Um, and a light catapult. That's what I would recommend. Can we afford it? We would need a sum total of 2,250 gold. For all of them, three? Uh -huh. We can do that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. We probably can. <clears throat> and in terms of raw raw numbers, that will like uh, more than triple our damage output. You said twenty two fifty. Uh, yeah. I mean, Rio would be fine putting up a thousand gold of that. <clears throat> okay. If we as long as she gets. Vested interest in the weapons. If we could all put up 563, that would be enough. Not well, counting our bird. That's just splitting it four ways. Cookie doesn't have uh, almost any Cook money left. Wait, how much does Cookie have? Cookie spent a lot on armor for our other character. Okay, and... I got 250, much? that's it. <laughs> Okay, um, see here. well, how, you said how much? 63? Yeah. Okay, cookie? Yeah. Put it in 100 and I'll cover the rest of it. Uh, so you want to, you want to put in a thousand gold? I can do it easy, yeah. Okay, oh. we'll, we'll just say, what's that? Nothing. Okay, Talon's willing to put in a thousand. Ryu's willing to put in a thousand. That leaves two fifty. I can easily do that. Okay. And Yanovan. <clears throat> okay. Well, let's go order uh, upgrade for ship weapons then. All right, so you marked off the full value for the three weapons you're look, looking to get. Yeah, we assumed that we could get a uh, half market value for selling the light ballistas you had. Half, yes. Right. As long as they're in good condition.
Now, if we were rolling in dough, we could, of course, put in much better weaponry. But <laughs> this stuff's not really to kill it. It's to make sure it, it doesn't try to kill right. us. Cleok pulls his companions aside before they make the purchase. Asks if they really wanted this. Cleok, man. Haven't... I mean... I'm, I don't know really what I want to do out here, but adventure is definitely in the cards. And fighting a giant space monster? <laughs> yeah. And surviving while we do it. Yes. By upgrading the ship of the person who kidnapped all of us. You also said it's free, too. I haven't forgotten. More DACA is more DACA. Very well. Have you seen him once act like a pirate since we've uh, been released? No. We have been attacked by pirates. I refuse to answer. Hmm. Whatever. It's your money. Now walk off. Okay. Well, and part of uh, what Rio's uh, agreement would have been is that they teach her everything they know about ship-to-ship combat during the the cruise and how to use all of the weapons that we purchased and related. Sure. I always forget that you know nothing. Wow. What? Is the crew actually trained Shots considering fired. The, that they're Yonavin against Ryu. That's all. Well, it does take more crew to use the weapon. You guys are purchased. Just to let you know, you do find out that's part of why the captain was somewhat reluctant, because that means he has to pay more to get more skilled crew that can handle the weapons yeah. more proficiently. So he actually has to front some money for that as well. So do we do we actually get to use these weapons? If you guys can crew one, sure, that'd be helpful. Yeah, we can crew one. Yeah. Hmm. The, uh, these weapons have an ideal crew of three each. Like the list of, like the list of two people. So if you're <clears throat> buying, if you guys are buying two medium ballista and the, what was it, the catapult? Light catapult, yeah. You would need to have um, three more crew. Right. Assuming that the crew manning the light bullets now crudely upgraded the weapon. It does we say ideal her. crew. If it's under ideal crew, it takes longer to load. It takes longer to shoot, which means you can't refire every space turn. Right. What do you mean ideal? Okay, so it's it's on the weapon damage chart. It's got an ideal crew column. Okay. That's all. Technically, one person can load a cannon by themselves. How long would it Makes take? Sense. Okay. Six seconds. So with three crew, you can load and fire the weapon every round. Nice. And that's the thing. The space turns are a little bit longer than standard turns. Mm-hmm. So it's not six seconds, it's a little bit longer. <laughs> no. Then again, the damage is also not on our normal terms either. Right. 
And you're also moving distances that aren't on your normal turns. I mean, one hex is not five feet. So how many normal turns is it per ship turn if we're, like, casting spells at the other ship? Usually you still only get one or two shots because it's still a matter of having to aim at something moving at fast speed so you take more time to actually line up a shot unless you want to do it at disadvantage. Okay, fine. I was going to get Spell Sniper with Eldritch Blast and the range increase so that it could actually hit a square out. That would actually allow you to hit a square out, though. Yeah, it would be like 500, 600 feet, something pretty long. Yeah, you still would be able to fire a few times. It just won't be, you know, getting blasts or anything. It still takes a bit of work. But yeah, that is a viable option, is if you have the sniper feats that they allow you to get the additional range. Well, all right, we think there's a uh, contact for this job in town, so we should go see this person. All right. Sounds good. Uh, we know that she's in the city. I don't know if we have her precise location. Do you have her name? How are you going to go about trying to find her? What's well, her name is Mary Yornes. Um, We did ask whether or not she was local. You said that she was in the city. Um, and we have the, the last known location of the horror was also given, uh, but we can't interpret that information because we don't understand navigation. Um, I would hope by being in the city, maybe she left a location to, to see her on the bill we got, or else yes. we would be asking the uh, registration. Yeah, no, you can, with a bit of work, you're able to find it. She's currently, you heard someone said they saw her going to it, it to grab a meal. Okay. <clears throat> Y'all joining me? Of course. Sure. Sure. All right. Go to seek out Mary, you and Ace. All right, you walk in. The bar is fairly empty. However, there is one person currently there. A female who looks like she has uh, had some experience, as she is not equipped as most of the people in town. Um, she has weapons, is that what you're saying, or what? Yes, as well as other things. She has equipment, weapons, armor. Ah. <laughs> uh, walk up to her. Uh, excuse me, we're looking for Mary Yornes. What do you want with her? Uh, we want to pursue the horror of Kurtle Velt, and we were hoping to find out more information. What do you want to know about the beast? You are Mary, I take it. You see she moves her hand, and you see a seat moves over underneath her feet, and she props him up. What do you want to know about the beast? <clears throat> Well, Probably everything that would be useful. Kill it. <laughs> it kills we... tons of people. <laughs> and destroys lots of ships. <laughs> it's like vicious and is nasty. So, so why did you uh, personally uh, want this monster killed? 
he destroyed my ship and killed my crew. Well, that would do it. Um, how big is it? How did it attack you? Um, how big is it? Um, big as some good sized ships. <laughs> Was it particularly maneuverable? Did you try Moved around shooting quite well. any we cannons at it? We to... had at it. It didn't seem to do a whole lot of damage. Then again, it seemed like it was metallic or something, potentially. Oh. Interesting. Metallic. Our captain has agreed to, uh, to attempt this, and we've upgraded the weapons with what we can afford. So, uh, excellent. You don't happen to know uh, if it has a layer, do you? My guess is would be it does somewhere. As to exactly where, I don't know. Right. Well, um, gentlemen, think of anything we need to know. Have a good day, man. Very well. You too. Best of luck. You're not the first ones who've come and asked about it. We'll see who gets it. Indeed. Was there any proof that you needed that it's dead? Yes, she needed its teeth. <laughs> okay. That was in the bill. You would know, but it's fine. One was left in my ship, so I know what they look like. Ew. Okay. <laughs> she did say her ship was destroyed and her crew killed. So the fact that she's here is quite interesting. <coughs> yeah. A metallic beast? <sighs> interesting. She said maybe it looked like metallic. So, well, that so maybe that could... scales or something. It might be resistant to damage and stuff. But that's uh. <laughs> that should be interesting. It's always encouraging. <laughs> oh yeah, it's dangerous. <laughs> huh. <coughs> I'm intrigued and and uh, worried about our survival. At the same time, huh? Can any one of us um, make, uh, we're heading back to the ship. Wait, can any, what? Question. She says she has one of the teeth or has seen it, right? Yeah. Is there a way we can see it? What's your thought? Okay. To confirm we killed the right monster. Well, because it would really that... suck if we killed a big monster. It turns out to be not the <laughs> one. That's for one. a general description of the beast. <laughs> so it's maybe uh... the whale. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> hmm. Um, Moving on. <laughs> interesting. Oh. Guys? Yes? Do any of you have the ability to cast, you know, to make a weapon magical? So um, it's casting light on it? <laughs> sort of. I can make a magical weapon. I can't make a... a we uh, Weapon magical. I can make a magical weapon. I can't make a weapon magical. I magic. can store a spell in a weapon. I can even do magic. Hmm. That's interesting. I think I could research a spell that might let me turn our ammunition into magical ammunition. Because if it has damage reduction, we would need something like that to get past it.
That's true. Very interesting. <sighs> All right. Well, um, are there any shipyards in port? Bye. Who are you asking? Back to Gary or Emrakul? No, I, th I think we're we're sort of walking on our way, walking back to the ship, and I'm pondering this fact. Um, I just so don't know if we've we've noticed any in our travels around here. So basically, dry dock is what you're looking for. Perception, investigation. Yeah, I guess if a dry dock is where they sell ships, then... Yeah. Well, are you looking for a place where they sell ships or build ships? Repair them. Sell ships. Repair ships. Sell ships, okay. Then yes, that'd be a shipping yard. Or a shipyard. I can investigate to find us the shipping yard. Roll an investigation. I don't have any dice. Oh, no, dice have a second. Yeah, I was. I have a giant one in my hand, but if you want to give me one to roll for the future. Oh wow! Hello. I investigate for a shipyard. Twenty-two. I'm not helping him. <laughs> Okay, you are able to find a shipyard that there's a number of ships docked. Some of them are for sale, some are people just uh, stopping in and loading goods. And you find that there's actually a few of them around. Squirrel. I look for one for sale that's the smallest one I could see. You find they actually have a little skiff that is just used for getting around the city. Huh. But it's technically a spell jamming ship because it does use a helm so that it can fly around so you can go directly across. And for those of you who missed it, this is a large ring. Or almost a full ring. Um, have you guys seen the space station in Treasure Planet? No. Uh, yes. No. Let me see if I can find it for you. <sighs> okay. That looks kind of cool. And that's a little more animated and cartoony than this one, of course, but it gives you the idea. <laughs> Lastly, that one does have some docks on it that you can see. Man, okay. two, those other two are supposed to actually be videos. Let me send their link.
There you go. That'll give you, hopefully, an idea of what sort of thing you're on. Okay. That's cool. So, yes, you were able to find some docks cookie. What? And they have a little skiff as the smallest, like I said, that is like ship to ship or flying around that base. Taxi Just cab, if you would. Curious what they, what they, uh, what the sticker price is on that little guy. Uh, let me look here. It's fairly cheap since they're not really space worthy. Not really space worthy. You're not going to go between spheres in them. Oh, well, I'm interested in one that could go between spheres. I thought you said it had a helm. If it has a helm, it should be able to go between spheres. It's a partial helm, and you could try to take uh, it. It does not have enough mass to have enough air. Well, yeah, you suffocate mass. along the way. Yes. But partial helm makes more sense. The smallest full helm ship is a flitter. It's a one-man crew, and it barely has any capacity, and it's actually elven, so they don't have any here for sale. Hmm. There is a mosquito that's a little bit bigger. A mosquito. And, <laughs> but that also has a very small payload. Of course, then some people have retrofitted caravels, and you'll see a few of those. How much does a uh, mosquito cost? 15,000. Minimum. Wow. Okay. Well, how much does a ship we're running now cost? Over 50,000. Minimum. <laughs> Cleox starts looking at some of the larger ships, like the... He, he wouldn't know it, but like a tradesman. The tradesmen, you wow, actually see quite yeah. a few of those. Now, the tradesmen are actually fairly popular. Um, and they have a decent size. You see a lot of them actually coming and going. Those are fairly readily available. Hmm. Has a ship ever been stolen? <laughs> what do they do to the thief, though? Imagine they'd kill him. <laughs> no. Just curious if anyone's... No, they'll, they'll sell them off to the flesh dealers. After acquiring all his assets, they'll sell them off to the flesh dealers. Who are the flesh dealers? Oh, great. Uh, the things that Cabnet wanted us or something. I don't know. Mm. Basically, would they not you kill them? You guys never have actually figured out all the details on the flesh dealers, have you? Nope. No. I don't know enough about them. Mm. Well, if any of you decided to ask more, you'll get some more details. But uh, Cleon did find out that the flesh dealers are. Are elephants. Elephants, what? And yogi, and beholders. Beholders. Huh. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah, beholders, yeah. You said Illithin, hold the holder? <laughs> Illithin. Huh. <sighs> Cool. Cleoc would ask the man what the budget large ship 
or larger ship. Well, my avian friend, it depends on what kind of ship you would like to acquire. If you look over you said there, the trade. Right? You said the tradesman was popular. Why is it popular? It's fairly largely made ship, takes a medium-sized crew, and is decent for hauling stuff around. I see. And it's not, you know, the most expensive ship, so it's a lot easier to get into than, say, you know, a galleon, or if you want to go with the treasure fleets over there, dragon ships are quite expensive, too. You know, they have heavier armaments and weaponry, he points out a ship, and it looks like a um, oriental dragon ship that is docking. Um, Clea, you've seen uh, the banner on it. You've seen that once before in some merchants who are traveling far to the east of where pretty much anyone else is. And you've only seen that emblem once. Most people in your area never have seen it. And I do mean growing up. You yes, see. That's odd. I They're think coming I... from some uh, planet good ways off. They usually don't come out this far. Um, but yeah, they're, they come from some planet there that has some fairly good resources. And apparently their empire links dealing with the rest of us spacefaring folk. <laughs> Huh. See, that's odd. I've seen that symbol. Interesting. Where are you from? Oh, what's the proper term for it? Since we're still all kind of new out here, I I believe it was you may call it like a crystal sphere called Faerun. Never heard of it. Huh. I don't think that's act the actual proper name of it. Faerun uh, no, is, is the continent. Yes. Yeah. Not Faerun. We're from a planet inside a crystal the, sphere. Technically the crystal sphere, just for player knowledge, and it's your characters of course don't know, is realm space. Right. Um, the planet <laughs> is Toril or Abertoril, depending on who you talk to. Um, and the continent you reside on is called Faerun. Right. We hail from a planet called, um... Oh, what was it again? Not... You may actually have called it Faerun, since that may be what you know it by. Uh... I would say that, uh, space travel is wasn't really, uh... <laughs> Isn't common where I came from, so oh, actually you're giving. Dangling. Welcome to space. <laughs> <sighs> I hate that name. <laughs> as I as I flex my wings at that statement. Oh, sorry. It's not meant to be offensive. It's just we all started as I I understand groundlings at some point. But but yes, I'm twelfth um, generation spacefarer. Just twelve. But, but yes. <laughs> We um, we are all groundless. That's that would be correct. So we're just trying to figure out a little bit more about where we've ended up. Well, if you ever get the money, I got lots of ships. Just um, don't have. Usually, we don't have any of the elven ships. They tend to keep a tight grasp on those. And of course, the flesh dealers don't like people dealing in their ships apart from them. So that's kind of difficult to do. But hey, any other ship, sure. Very well. Thank you very much. Indeed. Good luck on your travels, sir. Hope you can earn the money to get a ship. It's always good to get out on your own and see if you can make it or if it's better to let someone else handle the risks and planning.
I'd go over and take a closer look at the ship that uh, the rec I recognize the symbol of. You hear them talking a foreign language to you. But in common, you hear them talking to some of the ship hands. We have many goods, silk and coffee and other things that we have brought from planet. We want to trade. Hey, so where did you see the symbol? I um, hesitantly say home. Huh. Do you think this ship is from our planet? Or visits our planet? I, I don't know. We may okay. have visited it. You see a individual with some longer flowing clothing and definitely more ornate, ornate. Seems to be kind of the head of the ship, steps off, stretches his legs. Just kind of standing there, overseeing, watching everything else. I go over to him and say in common, uh, Hail, sir. Oh, yeah. How can I help you? Uh, yes. Um, we're we're going to ask you. Excuse me, this question may a little bit be a little bit odd, but um, are you familiar with a place called uh, Faerun? Oh yes, my grandpa used to do trading there, but I decided to go to the stars instead. I much more enjoyed the, the galaxy. Wow. Um. Um, Cookie's scratching his head. It's like, I'm from Faerun, and I haven't been back in some time. I haven't been back in <laughs> just but ever. <laughs> my dad, my dad decided to take to the stars and the treasure fleet, and we've hence enjoyed ourselves out in the wider world. Hmm. My cousin, though, he usually takes the goods and stuff we get and goes back down to the Empire and trades. Good business, good business. However, if it wasn't for that terrible phlogiston storm that we hit, we would have came this far. We usually don't come this way. It's not as uh, profitable. Hmm. Phlogiston storm. I didn't know they had those. Uh, they don't usually. It uh, usually means someone's doing things they shouldn't. Mm. <laughs> As they say, beware of all the fires when you're outside the sphere. Fire, of... fire, fire, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> no. uh, of course. <laughs> <sighs> We may Excuse be me, sir, how long are you planning to stay here? <laughs> ah, till business is done and we're ready to go. Ah. <clears throat> hey, guys. Okay, yes. thank you. Indeed, go talk. Have a wonderful day. We go off and talk to each other. <laughs> so, um... I bet that guy could take in us to his cousin who would go back to our planet. <laughs> That's probably true. You could ask him for directions back to your planet. Why you might you not know to... how to interpret him. Why would you want to go back? What about the rest of us? You gonna just leave us here? <laughs> I'm confused. Because I don't remember where I came from, and I don't know how to get back there. Yes. And yet, you do know what, <laughs> what's valuable to you. 
See, you just spent your money buying weapons because that's valuable to you. See, me... It just felt right. I'm confused. I started out in a background, you know, I was a soldier. And then I got abducted, and now I'm in space, and I'm getting stronger. And then I changed everything because I started reading about this magic. Uh, and I don't know who I am anymore. And I don't really know that I want to go home. I don't think that'll really fix my problems. I mean, seriously, we could have tried to go home before this, right? We're on a ship. We could, like, pay to go home or something. If we knew where home was. Hmm. I'm sure we could investigate and figure out what the actual name of the planet Crystal Sphere is in character. Yeah. Well, I mean, does the captain know? We never bothered to ask him. Not that that does as much good having that information. Um, I, I don't, I'm sorry, I really don't know where you're from, Mr. Amnesiac. Um, were you from Faerun? Was he? So long ago, know. we all woke up in in a prison cage together, and I don't remember what you told us because you certainly don't remember it either, or do you? You should you should search your memories and see if you remember. I should. Throw my cat. See what happens. <laughs> no, no, the other ones. The cat problem. Kevin, I need you to roll a d20. <laughs> Yonovan? Yes? I need you to roll a d20. Are you going to be friend or foe? To the cat? Potentially. The question is, are you going to be a friend? <sighs> uh, I don't feel like starting shit right now, so friend. <laughs> I need you to roll an animal handling check. Shoot, what did I do? Ah, 21. The cat appears around on your shoulder and doesn't seem to scratch you or anything. Just sitting there, obviously called into existence again. And like hisses at Talon. Uh, me? Why? I think maybe, maybe he was taking a nap <laughs> and you just woke him up. The cat seems bigger, bigger and heavier than last time. I, I look at him on my shoulder without moving my head. <sighs> the kind of nervous side glance. Wow. I have trust issues. Just goes back to sitting there. After a while, disappears. Is it getting fat? Did it get the mouse? It didn't seem fat at all. Just, just heavier? Bigger, heavier. Cleox so used to this cat at this point. He took drugs. Wait, this cat's getting bigger. That, hey. That's problematic. No, no, this could be a good thing. I mean, don't you want an extra dimensional companion? That would be that fun. Randomly swipes at you. <laughs> He was nice today. The past two times. <laughs> Maybe you should be like Gwendolyn. Be your ally. 
Maybe, maybe you need to give him some food. Gwendolyn? Who's Gwendolyn? Uh, you just... get bigger. There's no um, Gwendolyn. What's the okay. name of Dritz Panther? Yeah. I shall not Visit... say, because we're not talking about that, but it is not Gwendolyn. Okay. Okay. You want me to find out the spelling and spell it then? No. Just telling you it's not Gwendolyn. Whatever. You can be yourself. <sighs> okay, but you know what I was talking about, right? He knows what you're talking about. Anyway, uh, Cleoch mentions the... Try and get us back on track. Uh, Cleoch mentions the cookie <laughs> that it, it doesn't matter if we can go home. <sighs> I have things I want to do out here still. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter to you. I'm... I think it doesn't matter to me either right now, because honestly, this adventure thing is pretty fun, but I don't think going home will solve the problem of what the heck am I doing out here. I gotta figure that out on my own. I guess, shall we go to the ship? Well, I'm sure we can find Counselor Troy on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you mean Guinan? <laughs> that also works. <laughs> Both work <laughs> just fine. It really depends on whether you want to... Uh... I thought Cookie was Guinan. <laughs> then I'm sunk. But so what do you know? <laughs> Oh, what was his hey. name from Deep Space Nine? Dang it. Quark. Quark? Quark. Yeah, I, you might be more a Quark. Oh, uh, not really. Actually, Ryan, I think you could play Quark. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Ryan is... Yeah? Oh, boy. Uh, Rio actually does act kind of like kind of like Quark too. <laughs> At least before Rio lost her memory. Now nobody's sure. So <laughs> now, now it's more seven of nine ish. <laughs> seven day. Guys, let's get back. Please. Ow. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, back on track. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the ship, and I think we're ready to uh, shove off and try to find this space monster. You guys get back, and you see the captain is having the new weapons that you procured put on the ship and installed. You see a number of new faces that you've not seen before. Who definitely seem like they're more experienced in this realm of things. They seem more space worthy individuals. More scarred. <laughs> huh. Yeah. More scarred, more rough, more equipment. Cookie uh, goes up and says hello because I know everybody on the ship. <laughs> Mostly everyone. I was like, hello. But they're up there actually hello. working on the guns. Oh, Installations, then, not yeah. guns, but weapons. Installations. They'll come see me when it's time to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do enjoy serving people. Cookies and rice. <laughs> but servant doesn't seem to do me justice. So are they it's just installing the weapons and they're gonna leave or can I actually that they're actually new members of the crew? That Captain doesn't usually let other people on the ship. <clears throat> I'm going to watch them install the weapons if they need help, help them. You could certainly uh, we, help. We've only got crew to man one of them completely by ourselves. Right. Well, I'd also like to, you know, see how they're built while they're installing them. So if they take damage, I can fix them. Oh, yeah. Good call. Okay. Well, we can take a look. Roll an investigation and then a, I don't know, let's say engineering check, but that's not currently a skill. 
intelligence, I guess. <laughs> Cookie. Four, Fourteen. calling you over. Oh, hey. Captain? <laughs> four. Fourteen and four. <laughs> You're able to figure out how they work and stuff, but you're just, you realize you're just getting in the way if you try to help install them right now. All right. It's like, ah, Cookie, I got, uh, getting those weapons installed, and I have a nice little surprise for you all. Oh? I got oh. A, a dummy ship set up out there that we're going to go get to run a practice run at. So whenever you guys are ready, let me know what kind of stations you want for combat, and we'll head out and give this new crew a little practice run to kind of make sure things are smoothed over and ready to go before we go jumping in to try to find a space beast. Okay, that's a great idea. Okay. Um, I'm ready. You guys? Sure. What, what sort of positions uh, do you mean? I guess we man... Uh, yep. Y'all want to man a... Probably best if, if we try to man, like, uh, a ballista. We ought to remember, uh, looking through his book, that they... I believe the book you uh, that I bought in the Elven City had a section on ballistas. Yes, it did. Uh, so, <clears throat> yay! Um, so I take it Cleoc wants to be shooting a ballista. Uh, Cleoc would uh, say that he has been studying ranged combat through a <clears throat> book that he had bought a few weeks ago, which included the how to work a ballista. Excellent. Do you want to try crewing one? Sure. All right. Take a pick, and any of your fellows who want to help you with it, bring them along. Otherwise, we'll cast off here in just a moment. Your strength or dex a bonus here. <laughs> what the... Uh... I guess we'll just participate with you. Uh... Would, would it make sense for us to split up and, and direct? We don't have enough people to fully crew it, or would it make sense to just crew one? It's three it really only one. makes. I'd say it only makes sense if we have a bonus to the weapon. Anyone that has a bonus to the weapon should be aiming and firing one. What does it take to get a bonus to the weapon? For what it's worth, I believe. For Cleoc, I can't say Cleoc has actually looked at the ballista section of the book unless he has time to do so recently. Um, basically, we had talked about if I spend like one hour per long rest studying a section of the book, I get a plus one bonus. You could probably manage an hour while we go out, because I assume we're not doing target practice right next to this place. Seems reasonable. Uh, that's up to the DM, though. I can let it go, yeah. Okay. One thing I'm finding is that there's a static modifier based on the weapon type, which seems odd to me. I don't have the other rules and information on hand, so we'll have to go with that for now. You can dodge an incoming attack. 
Cookie, it seems like you're wanting to be the pilot. Congratulations, you get to run Emrakul. Okay. You're called up to Emrakul, and he's like, you seem to become the leader of the group, so let me teach you some about uh, piloting a ship, all right? Okay, yeah. The rest of you take your stations up at, with the crew. <coughs> Manning weapons. Um, anything particularly any of the rest of you want to do, or just man the weapons? Probably man the weapons for fun. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't have the focus to do any more than just help with the weapons. It's fine. Sounds good. So, who's shooting weapons? Cleok? Yonovan? Talon, you want to shoot a weapon? Sure. Alright. <laughs> So, you guys head out. Cookie, Emrakul points out the ship up ahead. The red icon on the table there. You are the blue. Okay. We are blue. Um, if you see the name. The Sanguine. Well, well, both of them said that before, so it was confusing. Yes, and I fixed that. Because I realized um, it was duplicating it on me. The... What is the SR of our ship? That is a good question. Movement is determined by SR, and how often the ship can turn is also determined by SR. But how far the ship can turn SR4. is determined by MC. SR4, okay. So, our, I guess we're going to start out, uh, do we have a starting direction we're pointed? Yes, the way you're facing towards the dice. Oh, towards the dice, okay, so there. Uh, no, where you first had it, like, that okay. diagonal, yeah. <clears throat> that direction, because you're heading basically along, he lined you okay. up to head along this line towards the ship. Sounds However, you good. You could easily change course if you wanted. Now, guys, are you looking at this? Are we the blue or the red for the double? We're blue. You're blue. Okay. <laughs> Let me explain a, a couple key points. Our weapons fire, um, but if we fired a round at that ship, uh, that ship is like 12 tiles away. Um, so if we fired, we're, it would take two or three rounds, probably three rounds to hit. Okay. Um, because oh. projectiles take time to travel. In so, theory, they can move out of the way. Yes. So hitting from this distance will be hard. So if it's so, an immovable spe space monster... Then you could just target it way off and keep bombarding it. Yeah. But if it can move and it takes more than one turn to hit, <clears throat> it's problematic because they could just move out of the way. So you're having to shoot and lead it. So you'd have to shoot a, a barrage on either side of it. Yeah. So if, if it moved, it'd move into your fire. That's the thing. It could easily switch direction, though. During right. Turn. So you'd shoot three, you'd shoot one on it and two on either side. It's possible to do it. You couldn't you couldn't do that at a distance of three, but at a distance of two tiles you could. Mm -hmm. So basically you aim at where you think it's gonna be and when it it's gonna hit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we can move four it. tiles around. Um we're a maneuverability now, what is, it says MR on the chart, mm -hmm. but then they talk about MC. MC squared. And SR, so it's confusing. Yeah, 
think that it was just a typo on their part. Let me look here. Keep in mind, this is first time for me as well, so thank you for your understanding. That's our ship rating. Okay. Maneuverability class. Can change facing up to one side per hex. Wow, that's very maneuverable. Can change facing one for every hex moved. Can't change until you move. So yeah, we can rotate one one direction for every tile we go through. That is pretty maneuverable. Yay, we got someone on. Yeah, big arcing turns though. Ooh. Yeah, sir. Okay, so it costs movement to turn. Ooh. Yes, it does. Okay, so what I can move four hexes or I can move a combination of four hexes and turns. Uh, if you turn in the hexes, does that mean you can actually can dodge? Now, Nate, I'm not certain that you gave me the right SR. I gave you the right um, SR. SR4? Yep. Okay. Because I would expect us to have a higher SR than that. Why? Uh, I think our maneuverability class is four. Yes. SR is based off something different. Yes. SR is based off the helmsman level. Yes, and, and the, the helm, but it helm. doesn't say exactly how. It's up above. It does say. It's the page before the one with the uh, combat rules. Up one from combat rules, and you'll see movement and facing ship rating. Right. Table. You got level of helmsman, major helm, minor helm. Maneuverability class is there as well. You have zero, one, two, three, four. Oh, I just, I just couldn't read the chart. <laughs> I, th I understand how to read it now. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So you should have some idea of what your helmsman is. I do. Human? It's a major helm. It's yeah. level eight. Was it declared? If it's a minor helm, it's level twelve to fourteen. Yep. All right. Either way. So whenever you're ready. Okay, gentlemen. Let's. Uh... I'm going to attempt to engage and. Now, does firing happen before or after we move? Either. It's kind of simultaneous. Simultaneous. I can't speak. It's kind of well, at the same time. I'm... So, kind of like regular D&D? &D? Yeah. Yep. So, mm, I'm going to move part of why I'm ruling that way. four there. And I want you all to fire at red. How you you fire? Get three shots. Okay. So, what, no warning shot? <clears throat> no. It's we need to fire up his nose. Well, first off, will it be travel time? It's a target. Uh, I don't know if it can move yet. We'll assume it can't move and fire at its current location. There will be travel time. Okay. The medium ballista moves at, at the same speed we do. 
four squares around. Do a perception check, by the way. Who? You. Um. That's a ten. Their ship is facing this way. Okay. So who wants to roll first? Me. You're basically seeing if you actually hit that spot or not, not whether you hit the ship or not yet. You picked it up and dropped it. Did you want to roll it? Um... Thirteen looks like. Okay. Um, which which weapon are you firing, Talon? I know Cleox said he was taking one of the trebuchet, not trebuchet, the ballista. Um, was Yonovan taking a ballista or a catapult? <laughs> and then which one was Talon on? <clears throat> um, I'll take us one of the catapult. Okay. All right. You got a ballista. You're at plus six. <sighs> So that's a 19. 19. Okay. And where were you targeting? Here. You're targeting the square he's in? Okay. Yeah. So Can we don't tell if the opposing ship is moving? Not yet. Okay. It hasn't been watched. Congratulations. That's about where your missile gets to at the end of the round. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Who can Cleoka fire at the position <laughs> Red is in? <clears throat> that would be a 10. Okay. Assuming I get the plus one. But... And you're doing the list uh, as well, so that's going to be the same location. Yes. Okay, Yonovan. Um, <laughs> change the draw. I guess I should ask before we start wasting ammo, is ammo costs associated with this as well? Right now, the captain's sponsoring it, so no. When you I'm have gonna fly ship. up there. Yeah. Okay. Roll your to hit. What's the bonus on this? Plus five. The catapult. You go slightly further though. You get to go five squares. Uh, no. Great. I didn't know that. Yep. It's what was your total shoot. to hit? Uh, 10. Yeah, okay. Unless it gets any additional bonuses from me being a player, rather than uh, just the 5. Not as far as I know. That's something that we need to look uh, up for next time. Okay. And their turn. And now, yes, those of you who want can roll a perception check to see that it has altered course and moved. <laughs> Cookie, you're up. 16 perception. Okay. Well... It scooted forward two squares and it's turned to face us. One. 
It, we appear to be a faster ship, but I suspect our weapons will miss. Barely. Very clever. All right, guys. It can't maneuver around. But I don't want to get close enough to get hit by it. Um... So what I'm going to do uh, What do you guys think? Do a dead fire from here or a move and fire? I say move here and fire. I, I can't actually move there. Oh, yeah. Uh, Why not? You'd have to turn and then move. Yeah, I, I could turn move. Um, Why don't you move up two and then fire and hit it? Move two, fire, and keep going. Yeah, because I think... If if we can continue on that line. Okay, so we'll move, turn, move. It's three actions. And fire. So take a shot at Two, where it's three, going. Four. Yeah. <laughs> Can you, only sh can you only shoot down lines with the grid? No, you can okay. shoot. We haven't followed that precisely. I'm just wondering how you calculate distance if you're doing across angles. Um, it's pretty straight. I mean, if you go in your corresponding hex grids. Okay. So I mean... If we get one more closer, I can hit him straight out. Yes, and he can hit us. Did you want to try it? Because I can... What's stopping him from moving closer to us and hitting us on him? In his turn. That's true. We can also move, fire, and move, or... I want to see what he does. Okay. Fire at him here. Um, choose your target and fire, and I'm going to keep moving. <laughs> Oh, you're right. There's nothing stopping him from moving and firing and hitting us. You. Yeah. This thing is hard to think up. You. All right. Well, anyway, yeah. watch your weapons. Call out who's going first. I fired. Would you roll? So, what square are you firing yeah. at first, Talon? Here. Okay. And what'd you get? Going towards this way. Well, with my roll the fifteen. So twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Did Did you roll a fifteen or did you roll a nine? Roll a nine. Well, so fifteen. Yeah. Which is it? Okay, and yours flies four, I believe. Yeah. All 
Alright. Who's next? <laughs> Yanovin or Kliok? Kliok won la- uh, first or second last time. I'll keep the same order. Kliok is going to fire at. <laughs> That's. Uh, which square? There's too much. Red. The one I put. The one right. I put the big X. So that's where you want it to hit. Yes. Actually, silly question. Since it will get there in a single turn, will it just outright miss? Yeah. It won't. It won't miss. And he Unless might he move into, into it. it. Hmm. Unless he moves into it, of course. Right. It keeps on which going, hit? Nate. Yes, I know. Okay. But at this point, they'd be traveling off further this way. Right. So, I mean, yeah, if he moves into it. Uh. If he moves, then he'll basically just dodge it and it'll travel on past him. Going, so the real question in combats like this is, are there... Well, I guess simultaneous turns can't be a thing, huh? Yeah, it's hard enough. Just, just fire. Let's. You roll a fifteen. No, I guess you roll again. <laughs> this is not right. It's a nine. Where were you targeting? Right in front of him. Okay. That's promising. He can't dodge that. Yeah, but a nine it's still potentially missed. Yeah, okay. ships still have an AC. It's basically, do you actually hit him? Oh, okay. In the right does the spot shot to still do it? Yeah, does it make contact? Is it a ricocheting point, shot? Or does it, like, nick off their edge or something like that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, his turn. Due to requirements, it bounces off. He is then going to turn. Yeah. <laughs> and move one. Damn it. And Ooh. shoot at us. <clears throat> All right. You're up. He's not going to shoot at us. It's you a practice sure, target. You, you sure, uh. I'm. of range. Look. Detect uh, spotting and uh, see what you see. Your glass of looking. What is my range, Adam? Twenty-two perception. You notice there is no weapons on the top. However, <laughs> it does have a nice ram with a big ram's head on the front. Oh bother! Oh, beautiful shiny metal. <laughs> There's also no people on the ship that you can see. Well, gentlemen, we don't want to be rammed by that, so we'll be running away from it while it chases us. Well, it can't But in the meantime, us. fire now. Yep. Guns ahead. It's in range. Hit. Fire. And this is why I turned to be sideways. Cookie, in case. are you going to move the ship or anything? No, we are within range of all our weapons. I'm going to move the ship after we fire. I, I would suggest turning the ship a can. Okay, well, the way the way it goes is I have to move forward, and then I will turn um, and go parallel to its current course with the rest of my speed. So basically he wants to shoot the guns now, though, so you don't get out of range. Okay. Yeah. Because we can hit it where it's at. It's yep. within range. It's within Eight. four. 
eight yep. total. You, you see talon fires and the ballista shell just hits wrong on the hole and just shatters. Nice. 25. Oof. That connects. Roll your Roll damage. Roll your damage. <laughs> 19. Yours is a 3d10? Ballista, right? Uh, yeah. Ballista. I think you guys yep. are yeah. Ballista, yeah. Each roll of mine has gotten worse. 3d10. Somehow. <laughs> 10, 9, and now okay. an 8. And that was... Okay. And Yonovan, you said you rolled worse. Ten, nine, and then eight. Yeah. Each of my each of my rolls has been successively worse. Awesome. So one ballista makes contact. Cookie. Okay, so I'm gonna tempt him because I don't want him to run away from us. So what I'm gonna do is move forward. Forward, turn, and go here. Now, how are the guns mounted on the ship? Are we able to fire all of them in any direction we're traveling? Or are we limited in where we can shoot? That hasn't really come up. There was some info on that, but I don't remember seeing it, so... We're just going to ignore that and see if these are... They have ranges, shoot anywhere. and so, yeah... We'll just have them for turrets for now, so you're able to spin them around and aim them well. Works for me. All right. So Cookie's done. Their turn. That's what I thought. So he going three this time? Yeah, he's gone three every single time. No, he it hasn't. Costs, it costs movement to turn. Oh shoot! Yeah. So, uh, I I brought him up to close range, so he should be easy to hit. We can outrun him, guys. Cookie, you now get a better look at it. This is a caraval. It's a smaller version of your ship, essentially, and oh. is also a seafaring vessel that's been made to be a spelljammer. That's cool. However, it is a smaller ship Faster. than yours. <laughs> Probably harder to hit. <laughs> it also has uh, an additional really? movement than we do. It what? should. It should. However, this one looks like its sails and stuff have been damaged. So it's not moving at full speed. And you notice there's some holes in the ship already. <laughs> Which I guess one's been used for target practice before. I... Either that, or that's the reason it's being used for target practice. I wonder how they're flying the thing. So I just rolled a 19, so... 25 right. That's a hit. Roll your damage, sir. Uh... 3d10. Great. Who's running the catapult? Basically the... Running's a strong word. <laughs> Got at it. This, at this point, I might have Ten. some of the crew take over, and I'll just shoot my gun. 10 damage. Cool. <laughs> Can your gun shoot a thousand yards? I think so. I'll look up the distance real quick. 23. Excellent contact. Eleven. Excellent. <laughs> Jonathan. 
Okay, let's see here. Haha, -ha. 18 plus 5, 23. Nice, that hits. <laughs> Roll your damage, sir. Is it just 3d10 as well? Catapult of 10. You get an extra d10. I was going to so say, four. it's a light catapult, right? Yeah, medium. Yep. So 4d10? 4, yep. Twenty-two. Nice roll. Damn! <laughs> That's more than half the damage we all together put into it. And that blasts right through it, and you see it start breaking apart. <laughs> all in one. Boom! <laughs> First time. Twenty-two happens to be exactly half. Yeah. Well done. Exactly half of what? Well, it's in, an the, average in the, the spelljammer PDF, there's a there's an average damage for four d ten averages to twenty two. Okay. So well done, gentlemen. You've had your first ship encounter. How did it feel? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's pretty cool. Tactical. Um, <laughs> I have to get in range. And also have the ability to stay out of reach of their weapons and or ramming. We also have to find out how fast they can move, though. There is boarding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah, choke your shoulders. I had planned for this to be basically a damaged ship that was basically going to be decommissioned, so he was able to acquire it instead and use it for practice to get the crew kind of working together. He's not an idiot. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this, though. Uh, if that ship was faster than us, we would have been in trouble. Because I gave up our advantage early on. <laughs> and that's something you have to start considering. As you become a more skilled individual at that endeavor. Congratulations, Cookie. I need you to roll a... Intelligence check. Uh, what am, what's my plus? Do I even have a plus to that? You should. Uh, no, I'm at zero and ten, so fourteen. Okay. Well, you get a plus one, and once you get five, you'll be able to get train. You'll be considered as proficient in spell jamming vehicles. Cool. Cool. Proficiency vehicle spell jammer. Okay. So there's sea vehicles, land vehicles, and spell jammers. Um, you That's will a cool still way need, to gain proficiency. You still will need to learn astral navigation since no one has done that yet but you all have now had your first step towards understanding how ships work and getting your own I liked navigating that was fun cool it sounds um, like you should have been a sailor instead of one of the uh, remember the army huh maybe I should have been a sailor cookie you did notice that Emrakul kept touching a device every time the ship moved. Who was I telling to move the ship? Who was well, I giving orders to? Technically, I had to? you being Emrakul moving the ship, so you saw ah. Emrakul doing it. Okay. He was dialoguing with you on how to maneuver and do all this stuff. So you're basically running him, just like, you know, they were running the gun crews, even though they're not technically the gun crews. Right. Since the gun crews are more than one person. Right. Okay. It's a way I can involve people. <laughs> yeah, it's good. And not have you be bored by me doing all the roles. 
It was far more engaging for me to attempt to navigate. <laughs> than sit there and watch. Yeah. You're the first one who acted like you wanted to step up and be interested in it, so guess what? You got picked. Because you've kind of been the de facto leader of the group, so the captain thought, hey, maybe you have potential to be a captain. And you just so happen to also have spell abilities, which means you may actually be able to use a spell, a helm. Now, I think in general, guys, <laughs> if you, anyone who mans a gun should... Um, uh, I can inform the strategy of what I plan to do. Obviously, you're in control of where you fire. That was kind of an interesting. We boxed him in, and then he's like, I'm just going to step right in between those two bullets. Thank you very much. <laughs> Keep in mind, and then I fired, I fired individual off the left. paid to be yeah. smart and do it this way, to be intelligent. Not everyone is going to be as necessarily as intelligent. Some may take a hit to try to get it up next to you quicker and bored. Right. And they may pay for that. I mean... <laughs> that was fun. It was. <laughs> hey, Nate, I'll see you in the morning. Indeed. All right, man. And I got Let's, a question uh, for you after this. Yep, I'll I was see you say, Let me just quickly end the recording. <laughs> Just thought I'd see if there's anything else you guys want to say related. So let me end it, and we'll pick up here next week, where you get to hunt your space beast of tentacle nastiness. Cool.